There are calls for delegates at the COP26 summit to include water security in their discussions over the next two weeks. Climate change is making the water cycle more volatile, with droughts and floods likely to become more extreme and frequent. Global warming is also affecting how much water is naturally stored in water bodies like ice, snow and lakes. Buena Bernal reports from the Philippines, a nation of over 7,600 islands where water security remains a problem for many. Ashley Adele is only 23, but already has three children with another one on the way. The first thing that she sees when she leaves the group of shanties she calls home is the vast expanse of water in Manila Bay. The sight of water is almost a taunt at her when her family has no direct access to water, both for drinking and bathing at home. Mahirap ba talaga mamlaan na pag walang tulog, gano'n. Tapos malayo pa po yung inigiba namin doon pa po sa bakery. Sawa ko po nagbubuhat. Ashley takes me to their home to show how difficult their conditions are. The alleys on the way are too narrow. When we get inside, I realize that they don't have a toilet or a bathroom. She tells me they urinate on the floor adjacent to where they sleep. Other toilet waste goes into a plastic bag that only gets collected when the garbage truck comes along every day. Gusto ko naman pong pakabit ng tubig, kaso wala pong pera pang down. Sila po kasi mekaniko yung trabaho ng asawa niya eh. Kaya po may tubig sila mo. Yung trabaho lang po kasi ng asawa ko, said ka. About an hour from here is Eastern Metro Manila, which also suffered a water crisis back in 2019. For days, piped water supply was cut for up to 20 hours a day, affecting even middle to higher income households. Because of rapid urbanization, demand finally outpaced supply. That demand was driven to a larger extent by commercial and industrial rather than household use. Typically, when you see a drought spell, the communications and public relations strategies always to save water at the household level. But even if we did that on the household level, if we did not do the same for commercial industrial consumption, it will be in vain. The irony is that an archipelago like the Philippines is surrounded by water. And one challenge is how to harvest and store water for use. I travel to the site of the proposed Kaliwa Dam, touted by the government as a solution to Metro Manila's water supply woes. We're here at the Agas River, where two major rivers near the Philippines' eastern coast intersect. One of them is the Kaliwa River, which flows from the Kaliwa watershed. When watersheds are denuded, rivers downstream, like this one, tend to overflow during intense rains, affecting riverside communities like the one behind me. The Kaliwa watershed is a protected area by law, able to catch rainwater to prevent floods and the overflow of water systems downstream. That's why many are opposed to the dam which would be built on the watershed. I visit one of the tribal communities living close to the watershed. At ang mga ilog, ang mga iniinuman naming mga tubig ay natutuyo na kapag panahon ng tag-araw. Ano pa kaya kung sisirain pa yung ilang ektaryang lupa? Because of its secluded location, Conchita's Domaga Tremontados community is off both the water treatment and power distribution grid. They rely instead on a small reservoir they built from which water, both for drinking and sanitation, can flow from further upland. For both Conchita and Ashley, access to our planet's most abundant resource is not a given. While it flows freely in the wild, water for human consumption is still out of reach for many like them. The Philippines is spread over 7,000 islands, making cost, distance, and long-term quality of pipes major obstacles to potable water access in the country. Buena Bernal, CNA, Philippines. A closer look at what's being done to solve the Philippines' water problems on CNA Correspondent and on our website at cna.asia.